The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage. Get up. Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him in reply, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Master, I want to see. And Jesus told him, Go your way. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. About two years ago, when I was first appointed as the director of the St. Jude Shrine, I was finishing up celebrating the 130 Spanish Mass. Now, for those of you who have never been to that Mass, usually the priest has to stay around for like an hour after the Mass because you're blessing so many people and so many things who come forward with special intentions. So, one of these Sundays, I was doing that, blessing people, and somebody came up who... um, was kind of dressed, looked a little bit rough. Wasn't exactly dressed in clothes that you would wear to church. And the two female companions with him were dressed in a similar fashion. And not only that, but he was holding this four-year-old boy in his arms. Now, despite the fact that he was not dressed in church clothes, he nonetheless was very respectful to me. Father, he said, I have something to tell you. I've got a story to tell you. Father, I have been in jail for a number of years. And I, for the first time, have met my son, four years old. And Father, I was supposed to be in jail for many more years. But for some reason this past Friday, I received an early parole and was released from jail. I don't know why that happened. I don't know what the basis for that was. And Father, I'm Catholic, but I don't know much about the church or anything. But I do know one thing. Somebody gave me one of these cards, and I've been praying the prayer on this card every day since I've been in jail. And on the back of this card is this St. Jude prayer. And it has an address of this church on it. So I wanted to come to this church as soon as I possibly could once I got out of jail to give thanks to God and to bring my son here who I've never met. This was a wonderful opportunity then, and I began to talk to him about the fact that his boy needed a father. He needed a father who could challenge him, a father who could lead him, a father who could be strong for him, and above all, a father who could be like Christ by example and by teaching, and to hand on that faith to his son, teaching his son to be a real man, even if his dad was not always one himself. Brothers and sisters, this is what St. Jude constantly does. St. Jude will be people who the world forgets about, the people we think are most unlikely. And he comes out of nowhere and he draws them to Christ. Now this is what happens though in our gospel today as well. St. Jude is like the crowd in the gospel we hear about. Let's look at this gospel. This man named Bartimaeus. He has no sight. Now, he's not a follower of Jesus, but he's heard about it. Maybe he's heard that he's done some miracles. And he hears that Jesus is passing by. So he begins to call out, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And note that at least initially, there's no direct interaction between Jesus and Bartimaeus, right? There's an intermediary there. 
the crowd. Now what does the crowd do at first? They're kind of fickle. Leave the master alone. Don't bother him. He has other things to do. But then Jesus, again, not having direct contact, but somehow knowing that Bartimaeus is calling him. Maybe he sees a commotion or something like this. And he tells the crowd, call him. Then the crowd comes out of nowhere and kind of unlikely says to him, take courage. Jesus is calling you. Bartimaeus is then brought to Jesus. He lays aside his cloak and he follows Jesus on the way. He becomes a follower of Jesus even though Jesus says, go your way. He follows the Lord after that. Again, something like St. Jude does. Coming out of nowhere and helping someone follow on the way. Now St. Jude is known for doing this and the tradition of the church says it's because he is one of the most forgotten of the disciples. And in fact, that he calls those who the world finds forgotten or those who almost completely lose hope. And this is, of course, because of his name. His name is very close to that of the traitor, Judas Iscariot. In fact, in Latin and in Spanish, it's actually the same name, Judas, Judas. So indeed, St. Jude, the most forgotten, and therefore helping out the most forgotten, now, an interesting little footnote. The director of music here at St. Dominic's Church has pointed something out to me. Since St. Jude has become so popular, especially in our parish and other places, the most forgotten apostle now has been transferred to the other priest, who sh uh, or the other apostle, who shares this feast day, whose name happens to be St. Simon. Anyway, so he might now be the most forgotten of the apostles, but that's a, an aside thing. Now here in San Francisco, St. Jude has been helping out those who are the most forgotten for many, many years. Starting in the 1930s, in the midst of the Great Depression, almost every parish turned to St. Jude, looking for help where help was almost despaired of. But then by the 1960s, most places devotion to St. Jude had faded. But not here. A crisis, the disillusionment of the hippie movement, happened and people found themselves here without hope and looking for something desperately. St. Jude out of the shadows pulling them to Christ. Then in the 1980s and 90s, again people desperate, especially in the midst of the AIDS epidemic here in San Francisco, seeking something. St. Jude out of the shadows again pulling them, drawing them here to St. Dominic's church. In a very real way I remember the founder of Chanticleer, Maestro Luis Bato, whom we were all privileged to sing his Requiem Mass. He was buried from here at St. Dominic's. I got to be the organist of that Mass. An incredible honor. St. Jude drawing people back. And today, St. Jude continues to do this. Brothers and sisters, yesterday, over a thousand people made a very public witness to the faith here in San Francisco where we carried the statue of St. Jude from way down in the Excelsior District, over six miles from Corpus Christi Parish here to St. Dominic's Parish, where we had a mass that was packed to the rafters, more full than even Christmas and Easter. St. Jude continues to draw people today. And throughout the day, the church has been filled with people coming to thank or to ask St. Jude for help. St. Jude drawing others to Christ. And we realize, brothers and sisters, that in the midst of our messed up world, we need this friend of God more than ever. No matter what our political affiliations were, we saw the rancor and the horribleness, especially in the light of the Judge Kavanaugh hearings. We see, too, yesterday the violence and the awfulness of the shootings in the synagogue in Pittsburgh. We see divisions within our church. We know about the problem with young people forgetting about God. And this is a worldwide problem. We need the friend of God, St. Jude, more than ever to come and give us help where hope is almost despaired of. This week we've been talking about in our novena about the notion of friendship with Christ and the friendship with each other in Christ. Today we turn to that great friend of Christ, the friend who kind of works in the background, St. Jude. And we ask for him to keep bringing us to Christ. St. Jude, whom the Holy Spirit alighted upon to give us the grace of the Holy Spirit 
through God's instrumentality. And what about us? Are we friends in Christ? Are we friends with each other in Christ? Are we friends of Christ himself? When we are friends with others, do we act like the second part of the crowd which leads people to Christ? Or the first part which scandalizes and pushes people away? When we act like Christ, do we act firm in our Catholic faith, proclaiming that faith even in the midst of a world which doesn't often want to hear it, amidst of a world which is often closed to the church? Or are we timid? Do we wallow in the shallows of mediocrity? Are we able to present that beautiful, joyful image of what a Christian should be to the world who is sitting in the valley of darkness? Or are we afraid and scared? When Bartimaeus receives his sight, he follows Christ along the way. And when we receive our sight, our forgiveness of sins, our dose of grace, do we follow Christ on the way? Let us ask our friend then St. Jude to accompany us on our way, that we might be happy and holy in this life, never lonely, but always looking to each other and seeking the joy of the Catholic faith with an eye to heaven, where we will be friends with all the friends of God, with St. Jude, with the Blessed Mother, with St. Dominic, and with our Lord, world without end, as the saints we are called to be. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen.